How's it going YouTube? As you guys know, normally my videos are all based around this car, this camper, car stereos and everything based around these vehicles. A few years ago, I used to have a 3D printer. When the very first came out, I can't even remember the name of it. I remember it was really expensive and it was all right. I made a few things. These blanks here are 3D printed. I think I got the files off Thingiverse. I can't even remember, it was years ago now. I completely modified a set of lights as well and I made these ones. Uh, these little LED lights inside, I, I made some little 3D printed brackets to hold those on as well. But this was all years ago. But I ended up getting rid of that printer because it, it weren't really that good. I printed off a couple of stupid little things but I never really bothered with it that much because in that day right at the beginning they weren't actually that good. I had an email about a month ago really randomly from uh, a company asking if I wanted to try their 3D printer. Um, it got me thinking again. So what I did is I had a Google around and I thought I'll have a look at these things and see, see what they're like nowadays because I've had nothing to do with them since. I've actually completely forgot everything I did of how I used it in previously so I couldn't even tell you how to use these things anymore. The printer that I was offered was the Creality uh, Ender 5 S1. It's their, it's their new printer and according to Google it's quite a good one and the Creality ones are quite a popular make as well so I thought, do you know what? I'm going to have a go at this. With the main aim is to see if complete noobs can get these things, build them and use them and print things. So I think that's what we're going to do. And as I've completely forgot everything, I do consider myself a complete noob about these things. So what they've sent there is the printer, the Creality Ender 5 S1. I've got a roll of PLA to print on as well, so we'll have a look at that. And they also sent me this, uh, Creality Sonic Pad. We'll have a good look at this as well, because I believe this brings a lot more user features into it and lets it print faster as well. So we'll have a look at this in a bit more detail as well. But I think first things first, what we'll do, let's open this box up, let's take the bits out, and then we've got to build it. Right, so opening this thing up, it looks like we've got some stickers and some instructions here. Everything seems nicely packaged, so what we'll do, take all this stuff out. We can see the next layer here. We'll get all this stuff out. Oh, there's some more PLA there as well. What I'll do is I'll do a little build video. Um, I'll go through some of the specs. A lot of them will probably be meaningless to me anyway, but I will actually go through them, just to, just the spec of the machine. And then we'll talk through how easy it was to build. There's everything unpacked out of the box. It's not actually that many pieces. It looks quite basic to be honest. Uh, we're just building the frame up around this base. So what I'll do is I'll pull out the instructions, I'll get this built. While I'm building it we'll go for a few specs. Most of these I don't understand but there will be people out there that do so I'm going to go through them and list them anyway. Build volume of 220 by 220 by 280 millimeters. It's an all-metal extruder which is a type sprite dual gear direct drive extruder. Uh, we've got a touch auto leveling system. You get a standard size brass nozzle, uh, which is 0.4 millimeters. We've got a printing accuracy of plus or minus 0.1 millimeter with a layer height of 0.05 to 0.35 millimeters. A filament diameter uh, 1.75 mil. We've got a nozzle temperature up to 300 degrees C, a heat bed temperature up to 110 degrees C. We have power loss recovery mode, a filament runout sensor, and we can transfer files via memory card or a USB type C cable. The supported filaments of this printer are PLA, PETG, ABS, TPU, PC, ASA, HIPS. Slicing software we can use is a Creatility Slicer, Creatility Print, Cura, Repetia Host, and Simplify 3D. Some accessories you can get for this printer are an acrylic enclosure, uh, which does look actually quite nice, sonic pad, a Wi-Fi box, and a camera kit. We have a PC build service. Uh, we've got two notches and a magnetic base for quick installation. I've noticed on a few videos that uh, people say this is too sticky. I personally didn't find it too sticky, but I've got nothing com to compare to either. Uh, but for me personally, I didn't find it too bad. We've got a 4.3 inch touch screen uh, with a wide viewing angle for controlling directly from the printer. Uh, we've got some nice little air ducts along the bottom of the nozzle as well, uh, which cools it down very good. And this seems to work very well. 
The hot end of this printer has been upgraded for high temp printing with a titanium alloy heat break which enables us to control temperatures up to 300 degrees C. We have an upgraded motion system which enables printing speeds of up to 250 millimeters per second. And they are the main features of the printer. Right, there we are. That's all built up and it's in its place. I've put it there at the side of my computer so it, it looks quite nice in that corner. I've not powered it on yet, we'll do that in a second together. I'm left over here with a, a few tools, we'll have a look at those later. And we've got a little SD card and a little adapter there as well, so we'll have a look at that in a second because I think that's got some instructions and stuff on it and we need that to transfer the files over to the printer. Uh, according to the instructions, uh, the next thing to do now is leveling. So let's have a look how to do that. In the instructions here it says please follow the steps of auxiliary levelling, auto levelling, z-axis compensation for levelling. And for tips see the attached electronic instructions. So I'm assuming that's on there. So I'll have a look and then we'll get back. Right so looking at that SD card we've got a boat g-code, a rabbit g-code which I'm assuming is the two test files and then the one in the middle we've got one called supplementary files so what I'll do is I'll extract that and I'll have a look through these instructions. I use Mac by the way I've got a MacBook Pro uh, I use this because of the video editing for the YouTube stuff so I've not got a PC everything here is on Mac. Uh, there's quite a few things on that card actually we've got a manual, software and drivers, operational video I'll watch that in a second, material guide, uh, the two models, uh, the test piece models a uh, little read me, oh that just says please do not extract files to this card. So I'm going to watch that video, uh, then we'll have a look at levelling this up, and that's the first thing. I've got a roll of PLA on it as well, this is the one that Creality sent me, extra, the black one. Uh, we did get a little roll of white with the printer, we'll try that one as well. But we've got to feed it through this tube here into the head. Alright, so we'll have a look at how to do all that in a second. First job is watching this video of how to do everything. So I'm going to sit through this. First 15 minutes of this 18 and a half minute video is how to build the thing. So it's probably worth watching this video before you attempt building it. It gives some good tips. Right, just watch the video. First thing we've got to do is level this bed. So let's turn it on. This is the first turn on. Right, so what we've got to do is settings and leveling method. And then it should lift itself up. Uh, what it's going to do is lift this bed up into the middle and get it to a central point and then we can level it from there. Right, that's there now waiting for me. What we've got to do is we've got to set that so that nozzle is 0.1 of a millimetre away from this bed. Right, we've got this piece of paper on here that uh, shows you about the levelling and it says on the top this piece of paper can be used for levelling. So what we need to do is slip that under there. The first job is we need to move the centre up to the right measurement so we need to move it up until it stops moving and then back it off a little bit and then that'll be the right distance away. So what I'll do is if I press this up button, I'll keep wobbling this backwards and forwards until it stops and then I'll back it back off a bit. Right, so let's do this central one. Right, there it is. I can feel a bit of resistance on that now. So if I just back it off just a little bit, I should be about right. I can feel the resistance on the paper, but it's not grabbing it too tight. So what I need to do now is these adjusters. We need to do that on each corner and then set it all up. Uh, so if I press these corresponding buttons here, press this one, it'll move over to this corner. Then what I can do is I can use the paper. I can feel, already feel that's too tight. And now what I need to do is just play around with each one of these adjusters, moving it up and down to get it to the right distance. And then all four corners will be at the right right height. And then from there, we can go to the auto leveling and then it'll set up itself a little bit better. Right, there's the bed manually leveled with those. Now I should be able to go to this auto level, press start and it'll do its thing. Right, that's that done. The bed's levelled. What I need to do now is load this up here into this tube. So let's have a look at seeing how to do that. Actually, quick one before we do that, we've got to set the temperature up. 
uh, for the material we're using. We're using this PLA. According to this, we've got a heat bed temperature of 60 and a nozzle temperature of 205. So I need to set those up now. So if we click on prepare, uh, temperature setting down in this corner, nozzle temp 205, uh, heat bed temp of 60, and back to home. So we can load this in. We need to go to prepare, uh, temperature setting, and preheat PLA. So we'll click on that. What we need to do is the end of this here, I need to cut this all nice into a 45 degree angle ready. So if I get this little bit here, we'll use these little wire cutters that we got with it, cut that at a 45 degree angle ready, and then we can start feeding it up this tube here. Right, before we do that, just need to pull this out and we'll wait till it pokes out of this end. So I'm gonna feed it up there, wait till it pokes out. There we are, poking out. We'll pull this little bit back here and poke it in. Right, so now that's in, back to prepare. In, out. Uh, let's put in 50, just to feed a little bit through. Right, on this card straight away, we saw the two models earlier. So if I put that card in, we should be able to print one straight off and then that'll test the printer. Right, so we'll put the card in. Click print, you can see both the files there. Let's try the boat. And we'll kick, click play and then see if it prints. Let's see what happens. Let's see if this prints okay, shall we? That's that printed. If I just push this down, uh, this is like a little magnetic plate. So this comes off. And then we should be able to just pull this off. And there's our little boat, our first print. There's a couple of little stringy bits around there, but they'll just brush off. But to be honest, that's pretty good. That was quite easy and straightforward to build and set up and do our first print. So we've done our little boat. Now we want to try and find something we want to print. There's plenty of sites like this Fingerverse uh, where you can get little files and things you want to print. Obviously you can 3D design and do them yourself. Uh, but what we'll do for today is we'll find something we want to print and then we'll see how to do it and see how easy it is. So the first thing is let's try and find something we want to print. As my channel's normally about my cars and stuff, we found a little Subaru Impreza WRX. So should we try printing that out and see what it turns out like? So I'll download these files, then we'll get the software we need so we can print it out. On the memory card, we got the files, didn't we? In those files, we've got software and driver. Uh, there's a uh, Creality Slicer. As you can see, this is the build for Windows. So I need the Mac version. So what I've done is I've gone to a Creality website. If we go to creality.com, open up that website, go down to software, then we've got the Creality Print. This is the one we want. So what I've done is I've gone down to the Mac and I've downloaded the Mac version. I've got that down here now. So when that starts up first time, you have to add your printer. Uh, as you can see over on the right hand side over there, I've got the printer, the Ender 5 S1. So what you do is on first startup, it comes up with this screen here. So you just scroll down and add the printer that you want. If I go across to the left hand side, open file, uh, we've got the Subaru file there, the STI file, that's the one we downloaded. So we, if we open that up into the program, there it is. Uh, if I zoom in so we can see it, because it's kind of small. There it is loaded into the program. Um, I don't know what any of these settings are as yet. So what I'll do is let's print high quality, shall we? And see what it turns out like. Right, so if I click on high quality, uh, I need to change the material to uh, Ender PLA because that's what we've got in it. And then we'll click slice. If I click export to local, uh, we can save that. You see 3D printer there. I've got the SD card named as 3D printer. So if I click save, that's finished. And now we can see that's on the card. So if we take that card out now, put it in the printer, and let's try it, shall we? Right, so we'll put the card in the printer. If I go to print, click Subaru, click pray, 
let's see what it does it set up the temperatures itself from that file uh, we'll sit back and we'll wait for it to get up to temperature then it should start I don't know if you can see in there but it looks like the front wheels weren't sticking to the bed and it's made it a bit of a mess right here we are back in the software I've loaded the Subaru back up so if we can have a look around it um, I've been having a play around these buttons as well and see what they do at the side we've got a scale one here so let's try making it a little bit bigger as well while we're at it because it's tiny isn't it let's change that to 150 uh, percent the uniforms clicked so if we zoom out and see how big it is on the bed it's a little bit bigger now so let's keep it at that uh, what I have noticed is if we look at it from the side and zoom in you can see that the front wheels there they're off the ground um, I don't know how you change that but what I've noticed down here is we've got a support button if I click that uh, only add support to the hotbed because we don't want it everywhere and then click automatic support that's going to add supports around the bottom just so it builds up a bit little bit better before it starts doing the actual car now if I go back to over here on the right hand side uh, we've got the PLA set up let's just change that to quality so it's not taking forever to print and click slice and see what it does there's a model there's all the support so if I export to local right back on the printer uh, we'll put the card in go to print uh, Subaru up at the top press play and let's see what it does see if it works this time and there we are all finished let's see if we can get it off right here we are our super tiny little Subaru let's see if we can break it off of this that came off quite easy and there we are our little miniature Subaru printed out all right it's not absolutely perfect but I'm sure there's a load of other settings you can play with to make it much better so we've printed out something off the internet so that was all pretty straightforward to be honest from unboxing it to building it to setting it up doing our first print to downloading one off the internet and then printing that as well although it's pretty small it's printed out all right I and mean, the whole process was quite simple uh, I'm sure there's a million different settings on that to set things up. I'm sure that you can make things a lot better. Um, I've seen in, I've seen videos before on the internet that go really into detail. I'm obviously really new to this, so I'm I'm not doing that at all. I just wanted to look at this from a complete new perspective. So new to 3D printing, somebody that wants to dab the finger in it. This particular printer, this Ender 5 S1, um, is reasonably priced as well uh, compared to the one I had years ago. Uh, that was rid ridiculously expensive. This one's not bad at all, really. I can't remember what they're selling at right at this minute. I know they've got a promotion on on their website, which makes it a lot cheaper than what it should have been. <clears throat> I've also got this to test. This is a Creality Sonic Pad. Uh, this joins on like an extra display and this makes things a lot faster a lot more reliable and a lot easier to do so what I'll do is I'll have a look at this in another video once I'm a bit more comfortable with a printer I'll have a quick look at this and figure out what exactly what it is so I know what I'm talking about when we're doing a video on that as well so I'll do this one a little bit later but if you want to check this out for yourself check it out on their website and you'll see exactly what it is for yourself I'll stick links to all this down below uh, down to the printer down to the PLA that I got this sonic pad as well i'll stick some links down to that i'm going to have a play with it i'm going to see what i can do that's more relevant to this channel because obviously i'm normally i'm doing the cars so i'm sure there's plenty of things we can do for that later on i know somebody that printed some backlights for the mr2 so so i'm sure we'll get lots more use out of this printer as well later on but overall I'm, I'm pretty happy with the experience it was all pretty straightforward to be honest so if you want to see some more videos uh, testing random things and around the cars and the camper and everything else then subscribe to the channel like the video if you liked it and I'll catch you guys again later cheers